If you can't beat them, join them. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Gamerverse Joe Fix-It Wave. I know this is coming in a little bit late, but who cares? I mean, it's opening toys, it's looking at action figures. And I'll be honest, I was just going to pick up Kang and Jocasta. Jocasta? Jocasta? And that's all I got off Amazon several, several weeks ago. But... I saw the rest in store recently, and I thought, oh, well, who, that Iron Man in Foosh Blue, and I have Captain America on the shelf, do I need a Falcon? And I do like the black costume on the Game Reverse Captain America a little bit better. And at that point, I'm just a Thunderstrike away from building Fix-It, so, I mean, it is a slippery slope. Now, I just kind of called all these out, but you can see the order of importance here. These three are my mains. The Kang, the Jocasta, the Falcon. But also in this wave is Thunderstrike. And here is Game Reverse Captain America in stealth costume. And then finally there is Iron Man in atmosphere armor. The two Game Reverse characters has the, the Game Reverse packaging on the side, while the comic characters have some very nice artwork. I love these pictures. On the back, pretty promotional shots of each of the figures, a little bio to go along with it. Then across the bottom, I sure miss those half pictures, those wanted type posters. We see everybody else in the wave, the Joe fix it and the numbers and which parts comes with which figure. And then some warnings, don't put them in your mouth. On the other side, those same pictures on top, there's a Marvel logo, except for the two game reverses have Avengers. On the bottom, legalese, barcodes, but mm. let's get these open and we're gonna start with, well, we're gonna start with Captain America. Mostly because We've seen this figure in a different color, and I've reviewed this figure. For the most part, there is a new piece. This box is kicking my ass. Okay, so maybe these aren't as easy to open from the bottom. It's been a while since I've done a Marvel Legends wave. <laughs> Not the most conventional way to open it, but it works, I guess. There we go, good as new. And like I said, we've seen this before in the first Game Reverse wave. That figure is in more traditional colors, but muted. You know, for the video games, they gotta bring some realism into it. Same sculpt all the way around, at least from the neck down. Let's do this. Same sculpt for both figures, but I like the stealth better. Maybe it's because it's just black and gray. Maybe it's more military. Touristic. I don't know. But the big thing for me is they came in with some silver for the knee pads. That just makes it pop a bit. Some more silver on the arm guards. Silver for the star, which was on the first one too, but yeah, you know what I mean. There's some buckles here and there that I wish they had brought some color to. Right here, just a little bit, maybe some silver, maybe some gray. I don't know. Well, they did do a touch of silver here on the back of the hand too. I'm going to say silver about four more times, I think. On the belt buckle, Silver. The new thing here is the head. And while it doesn't really resemble the Unmasked Captain America from the game, I feel like it it's a decent Steve Rogers face. I don't like how blatant the separation of hair and face is. You can tell it's a separate piece and it comes off looking wig-like. But I really, 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 really like the color they used here. That blondish with the dirty wash, that works perfect. Then they have the eyebrows matching with some photo reel on the eyes. The lips bring some color here and there. But if you don't like that, easily pops off. And like the first one, it comes with a... Get on there. I'm forcing you... Go. There is a masthead, and there's some more silver on the faux wings on the side. There's silver on the A. Pain is a little bit off the sculpt, but you can't see it when it's in normal lighting. It doesn't look like the same head, though. The unmasked head is definitely bigger. The bigger head makes the overall piece more realistic proportionally. The masthead makes it feel more superhuman. Oh, I just noticed something right there. There's some silver on that zipper. A lot of people don't like this design. It's more like a tactical SWAT guy. But me, I, uh, I don't know. I kind of like it. Captain America is known to change costumes every now and then. It's just another look. And if nothing else, it's excellent custom fodder. Articulation, there is a hinge at the top of the neck with a ball. Goes looking up, goes looking down. Not too much tilt, but lots of swivel. Arm hinges about right there. That shoulder pad gets in the way. Swivels around. Swivel at the bicep, hidden by that strap. Double elbow comes up, hinge and swivel. Ab crunch goes forward just a bit, then back. Swivel at the waist, hidden behind that belt, well kinda, where's it? Oh, 
The belt's supposed to stay on the top. I forgot about that. Ball coming out to the hip, goes forward, back, out. Eh, not too shabby. Swivel at the thigh, cuts that pocket right in half. Double knee. Oh, kicks his cap mass. Boop, 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 boop. Swivel at the boot. Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back. Goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, like I showed, there is the alternate unmasked head. I probably won't use this. I like this look enough to keep it this way. In the package, he comes with a right fist, and then there is a left trigger finger. But if you don't want those, those pop out and there is an alternate left fist and an alternate right trigger finger. As always with Captain America, there is the shield. There's the red, there's the blue, there's the silver star, silver ring. And bringing in the first one, there's not a lot of difference here. And then on the back, there's either the plug or the clamp. And with that, you can either plug it in like that, which I always like this look. I appreciate it when they give us a place to put the shield. But you can also use that pin to have him hold it in his gripping hand. And it slings it a bit low. But I feel like that is more secure than clamping this over this forearm armor like this. That's more how I'm used to seeing him hold it. And you can rotate it around to the front as long as it's up here. You go to the wrist and it's too loose. Captain America stands at about six and three eighths inches tall. Here he is with the 80th anniversary Captain America and one of the older comic book Captain Americas. Now I don't feel like this is too far off because he comes off slightly large on the Marvel Legends MCU shelf. Next up, let's do Gamerverse Atmosphere Armor Iron Man. I cannot believe with Captain America, I forgot how to open a Marvel Legends box. <laughs> Has it been that long? And it's another great Iron Man. What else can I say? I don't get a lot of Iron Mans, but you put one in Foosh Blue and I will probably bite on it. Plus this is an armor I don't have. This is based on the Target exclusive Star Boost. I didn't care for the white and gold colors there. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for the blue and silver. I can use this as a movie armor because there were so many different movie armors there and there could have been some behind the scenes. You can put this in an armory. It just looks good. In fact, that's how I do most of my Iron Man figures is <laughs> Can it fit into an armory? Can it fit into a movie display? Can it fit in with the rest of the armors? And most of the time, you can. I love the bulkiness of the torso here, how it comes up and over on the sides of the head, and then just the size of the shoulder pads, the armor itself, everything blends together, but there is a power to it. Get the same thing down here at the legs too. It's kind of chunky. It comes down over the sides of the feet. Then there's these wings on the back of the legs, which I can only assume help flight somehow, getting this big bulky bastard through the air. <laughs> few scratches on the silver, but I'm okay with that. Stark can't go an issue or a movie without totally destroying or damaging an armor of some kind. The blue is a bit metallic. It's also a bit swirly twirly or marbleized. And then that's just set off by the silvers. And then there's also gunmetal color in places that just, oh man, it looks so good. I guess if I had any complaint, it's the bulkiness gets in the way of some of the articulation, which makes sense. I mean, if you were wearing a metal armor like this, you're gonna have things run into each other. Look up! Oh, not so much. And then there's the feet. The side armor pieces do get in the way a bit. But because of the feet being how they are, it doesn't matter. You can just toss it down gonna stand up. Going over articulation, there is a hinge with a ball at the top of the neck. Looks up a bit, can bury the chin, not a lot of tilt. Swivel, his chin hits the size there, donk, donk, donk. This shoulder armor piece does get in the way of the hinge that comes up to there. Rotates around, swivel at the bicep, double elbow, oh, well, comes up further than I thought it would. Hinge at the wrist, and we've been seeing some Iron Man armors that can't do that, Just get up into the repulsor pose or the flight pose, and I'm glad they engineered something to get that back. Then of course that swivels, there's a hinge at the torso, goes forward, goes back, swivel at the waist, blatant cut. Ball coming out to the hip, goes up, goes back a bit, goes, oh, out. Not terrible for this armor. What this goes out makes up for what this doesn't. And it's almost the same angle. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh, well, those get in the way. Hinge at the ankle, goes back just a bit, forward, hits that armor plate. Is that a soft? Well, yeah. That does flex a bit. And then there's forward facing pin for a bit of rocker. For accessories, I haven't done this yet. Oh, well, that pops right off. And for that, you can pop on an unmasked Tony Stark head. Not a bad look, just doesn't look a lot like Tony Stark. It's got the hair, it's got the goatee, so it's most of the way there. I'm not saying it's a bad look, it's just, well, I don't know, I don't think of it as Tony. But I do like the photo reel for the eyes and the lips. It puts the colors where they need to be. I don't care too much for the photo reeled age lines or shadow across the forehead, but eh. As much as I like this sculpt as just a generic dude wearing Iron Man armor, I'll probably put the helmet back on. And I talked about the wrists again being able to go up like this. If you have 
the blast effects from different Iron Mans. This Iron Man did not come with this. I just have this sitting on the desk. You can plug those old effects in there or it also goes in the feet. But if you want your Iron Man using some fists, this figure also comes with those. They look a bit clunky with this big old bow on the back. Well, I guess it's an armor plate, but yeah, it looks odd. Well, I guess mainly because it's not really a fist. You can still see the repulsor right there. It's more like he's doing this. Iron Man stands at about six and seven sixteenths, which puts him slightly, just ever so slightly taller than Captain America. If you want to fit him in with your comic book Iron Mans, like the 80th anniversary or the Bleeding Edge, not a problem there. But it also wouldn't have much of a problem fitting into a movie display. And I would compare it to the first Game Reverse Iron Man, which I have but I cannot find it. As soon as I finish this review, post it up, that's when I'll run right across it. I'll look across the room into a box and go, oh, there it is. Next up, Marvel's Thunderstrike. Not just Thunderstrike, Marvel's Thunderstrike. And I don't have a lot of connection to Thunderstrike. My brother collected Thor back in the day and by the time Thunderstrike came around, I, I wasn't really even reading it. In fact, I don't think I remember reading anything with this character. <laughs> it's okay. It's a big body. It's bulky. It's powerful. I think I was predetermined to not like this figure simply because it's just a pet peeve. I don't like screaming faces unless it's Banshee or somebody. Don't get me wrong. It's a nice sculpt. I mean, it, he actually has some angry lines to it. There's where his face looks like he's screaming instead of just an open mouth sculpted on a neutral face. It's even got a lot of nice detail inside the mouth. There's the teeth. There's the tongue. There's the uvula right back there yeah but that may be up your alley you may like open mouths we can't really count that against it because it is a dynamic look but we have the base body underneath like i said it's a big bulky body you have some strength to it it looks like he's nice and thick the discs on the torso are sculpted on and they have this nice blue metallic look to them have the thor belt have the t sculpted on the front no paint it's, it's a bit of a bright yellow plastic and like i've demonstrated the vest is a nice soft material it gets up and out of the way i dig the sculpt it looks like some zipper teeth on both sides you have these buttons painted silver the buckle painted silver and then on the back pretty plain popped collar i have this seam line running across here leather texture to the whole thing and is there a wash there or is that my lights playing tricks on me? The ponytail is also a soft material. That's not actually articulated. That's just bending around. The gauntlets are a separate piece, which may come into play when we... Did it come with? Yeah, when we swap the hand. Get below the belt. I think this is reused from somebody. It looks familiar. It's a pretty nondescript well ass and upper legs below that and you get this thick heavy leather boot with the padding on the front he's ready to kick the hell out of somebody the same texture from the vest is carried down to here but for some reason it's a darker brown have some buckles right here well another strap or back plate a couple of straps over the boot and then a big chunky foot maybe slightly high crotched and i feel at this point i'm just taking pot shots at this figure I, I don't hate it i really don't going over articulation there is a hinge at the top of the neck with a ball joint but because of the popped collar and the ponytail you can already see it, there's no looking up right there can look down eh, not a lot of tilt mostly swivel hinge at the shoulder goes up to 90 swivels around rotation at the bicep double elbow oh wow for a muscle guy that's actually pretty far oh hammer hold in hand is up and down that's cool and then a swivel torso is a ball joint so you get rotation out of it forward and back and tilt and tilt forward and back and tilt and tilt everybody forward and back and tilt and tilt no waste because you get rotation up there too ball coming out to the hip goes well actually that's better than the other two figures so far back not so much out eh, not terrible swivel at the thigh double knee and there's no way yeah it's stopping right there hinge at the ankle goes back goes forward forward facing pin for rocker for accessories thunderstrike comes with this hammer i am not sure if this is another version of mjolnir or if this is just his own personal hammer there is another t logo up here on the top and you have a hammer side but you can split some, well it's not really sharp and this is some blunt force trauma causing hammer a nice wrap sculpt on the handle and then there's actually a chain instead of the usual leather loop we see goes in the hand no big deal at all i guess this left hand is to maybe either hold it like that or do some kind of but just in case you don't care for that you can pull that hand out and yep you have to watch out for that bracer falling off. Height-wise, Thunderstrike isn't as big as I thought he'd be. It's six and three quarters, but he's still quite a bit bigger than this wave's Game Reverse Captain America and Iron Man. Here's the Marvel Legends 80th anniversary Thor and then the newer Beta Ray Bill. He can hold his own with these guys flying through the universe with their hammers. Next up, 
Got to go with Falcon. And when I first picked it up, I thought, there's something wrong here. And I couldn't figure it out until I realized the Build-A-Figure piece is hidden back behind the logo. We don't see that a lot anymore. Usually it's up here, down here, in plain sight somewhere. But that's not a huge deal. Just something that jumped out at me. Yeah. Oh, separate wing tray. And I like this more than I thought I would. I'm more of a classic Falcon type guy, but I have no problem with this costume. It's almost that classic feel with the colors, but then modernized to cover his old body. I like a deep V-neck, but there's also something to be said here. And I like this body. It fits the character. At first I thought they were going to use the Bucky Cap body, which... <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, I guess, but it's just so overused. So Falcon using this one, yeah, not a problem. But with this costume, there is quite a bit of straight lines, and for the most part, it's nicely applied. Coming all the way around the back, it cuts across several points of articulation. Of course, when you move it, it's going to break it up a bit like this. That can be helped when you're dealing with hard plastic bodies. The worst offender is the edge on the white. But the rest of the body just cast in red. You have these shoes with the soles on them and then the gold bracers on the forearms that are actually part of the sculpt. I dig that this body and this character has the butterfly shoulders because of the wings, but what would have put it over the top is a body with a ball joint going across here right under this costume design and then not having articulation cutting across the belt. This would have taken care of the twist with a ball joint up there and then this could have been seamless. As is, you do that or you do that, it breaks it up. But it's no different than doing that. It's just, you know, perfect world scenario. And then the head, it is just pure falcon. I mean, you have those eyes peering out from the holes in the mask, the gold. Again, it has that classic feel to it, but definitely modern or somewhere in between. I think this is an older costume. I'm not sure what he's wearing at the moment. But looking at it without some magnifiers, it looks like old school Marvel Legends paint job on the eyes. At some point, I'd like to see them all go to photo rail comic book characters mcu not so much for consistency but it just looks nicer but looking really really close there's a lot of just paint mush up on the white which i understand it is white it's harder to keep clean but this line up here on the shoulders that's messy as hell too. Going over articulation, there's the good old hinge at the top of the neck with the ball going up into the head. Flying character, so he better be able to look up and he does it pretty well. Looks down, oh, not bad tilt. Swivel, butterfly at the shoulder goes way back and then forward. Hinge at the shoulder goes up to there and then that rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep. Pinless elbows, which I don't have a lot of experience with yet. It seems that the right one is a bit stuck. Oh yeah, plenty of range. Hinge side to side and rotation. Ab crunch goes goes forward, arcs back, swivel at the waist, ball at the hip goes forward, and back, and oh, out, yep, Falcon wins so far, swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh, he can fly through the air, kicking his own buttocks, kind of loosen the knee though, just a bit, swivel at the calf, hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker, for accessories, he comes with these sets of wings for the arms, it's Falcon, he's got to have wings, and I'm not sure if this costume had some kind of I, is it the hologram wings that you can kind of see through? There is a translucency here. But if not, that's what I'm going with because, hey, my toys. I can do whatever I want. There is an R right there at the peg, and I think it should be the same right there. That just plugs into a slot in the back of the arm, and then the long wing plugs into the bottom of the bracer. We've seen these before, of course. I'll show you Lizard here in a second, but these seem to have more pop to it. They want to stay better. And I know I just said Lizard. You know I meant Vulture. Same wings, just in a different color. The green on the Vultures, I nearly said Lizard again, it's not translucent. You can't see. So there may be something to my theory that this was an energy effect or something. Or if I'm totally wrong, go down to the comment section and say, hey, dumbass, they're supposed to be feathers. Because at some point, I do want to see that classic Falcon with the full-on feather wings. With Vulture, when you started twisting at the bicep, these two wing parts would run into each other, kind of snap the one or the other pieces off. Here, you turn the arm, the whole thing's moving with it. Much, 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 much better. You get all kinds of posability with this. He can dive? That's awesome. Oh yeah, those butterfly shoulders are amazing for a flying character. Actually, you can use them as a kickstand if you want help them stand up but he doesn't seem to have much trouble even when they're not touching the ground also if you want to get them in full on flight mode what better way than to have flat palms that looks okay but it almost seems like too much doesn't it you have the wings you have the flatness there 
You have the flatness of the hands. I, I think I like the fists better. It's just so dynamic. Full wingspan is almost 13 inches, but then he stands at about six and a quarter inches tall, which does put him a little bit shorter, a little bit skinnier than the two comic book Captain Americas. And even though I think of Sam as a bit more big and brawny, being a flying character with these wings, I'm okay with the agile look to it. And unfortunately, I don't have the old Toy Biz Falcon. Maybe it'll be right here. I'll find some pictures of it, throw it up there to compare. Pair. Next up, let's look at Jocasta. Jocasta? Hmm. And the reason she's high on my list is because of, was it Atlantis Attacks? She was part of the, like, the B-list Avengers that were called in to fight the fight. Was it that or was it the Serpent Crown? It was one of those big crossovers. But she was with, like, Grey Hulk and Blue Furry Beast in the brown and yellow X and the female yellow jacket. It was just one of those things I read and loved and never went back and read it again. And this is exactly what I wanted out of an action figure of this character. Mostly the head. That's what they had to nail. And these head tendril things that are supposedly made out of metal in the comic books, it's perfect. The bolted eyebrow look, the little lines right here, the you can see a face, but at the same time, it looks like a metal plate over a bunch of robotics. There's a nose, but this headpiece comes down over it. Would have been easy to mess up, but I don't feel like Hasbro did. And then it's just infinite smoothness on the back. And then they went as far as to sculpt a new torso. At least I think this is a new torso. This line comes down the middle from the top of the neck, down around the chest, and then also down across the abs. It has this diamond sculpt to it, this ridge running around to the back and then meeting right there. There's the studded band on the leg. It is a separate piece that you can take off, but you get it up to here, it's not going anywhere. And then I'm pretty sure the legs and the arms are reuse. Maybe, well, I don't know. I hate to call anything out and be wrong, but the hips kind of look moonstone-ish. It doesn't quite fit the upper body. It really just goes, juts out. I wish it was a bit more streamlined, but at the same time, that head makes up for any nitpick I can find with the body, except one Thing. Again, pinless in the arms, there's a hinge and swivel there, but both arms were stuck. I had to take some heat to them, and even now they're a bit tight to get bent, but I can bend them. I can't complain about the range in a single elbow. It does go past 90. I also like the two-tone silver. There's a darker color to the base body, but then the raised sculpted parts are a lighter silver. It just makes for a neat effect. It's very robotic. Going over articulation, the <laughs> these do get in the way a bit, but there's your hinge, there's your ball. Can look up and down. Well, I guess those do bend out of the way. More tilt than I thought there would be. And then swivel. Arm hinges up. Has some detents in there, but it does come up past 90. Swivels around. Swivel at the bicep. Elbow bends past 90. Rotation. Hinge at the wrist goes quite a bit. And then swivel. Ball joint at the torso. Hula hoops really, really well. Ball at the hip goes... Whoa, forward, back, out, eh, swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh yeah, easily. Hinge of the ankle goes back, goes forward, and then not a super high heel, so there is forward pin for rocker. For accessories, she comes with two fists, but those do pull out, and you can put in Hasbro's handy dandy magic spell uh, spider woman sting things that, um, I don't know. We've just seen these a lot. And for this character, I, I don't really feel it's appropriate. They were just kind of thrown in. In fact, now that I'm looking at it, she's making shadow animals. I don't know what the hell that animal was. Oh, and I dig the neutral stance. She stands at about six and an eighth inches tall. And here she is with one of the only Ultrons that I have. Hasbro. We need a proper classic Ultron. But then here she is with some other Avengers, or well, Brotherhood of Mutants, or you know what I mean. And then finally, the one I was looking most forward to, Kang. That old Kang needed a redo so bad. And seeing some of the pictures I've already seen of this figure, oh man, it just does the character justice. Am I reviewing it before I even get it out of the package? What's going on there? I knew there was a reason I saved this one for last. Hasbro. Killed it with the sculpt here and the engineering. Paint suffers just a bit, but I can definitely see where the budget went on this figure. I mean, just look at the, well, besides the wrinkles going up, but there's also a texture to the fabric itself that carries down to the lower tunic with a lighter color green for this arrow pointing at, you know, the crotchal region. And at first I thought, well, damn, why didn't the arms and the legs get that same texture and it's even a different sheen? And then I realized this outer cloak maybe a different piece, and then he's got an undersuit that is a 
just a slightly different shade of green, or at least that's what I'm going with. But even there, the arms have some nice wrinklage to it coming down. It's puffy around the sleeve going down to a tight bracer. The belt, sharp details all the way around, and then the legs have those lines running up and down them. This thing is a completely, at least as far as I can see, 100% new sculpt. It's just that classic Kang look. Again, a bit shiny, especially in contrast to the matte look of this top piece. This may need some dull coat or something just to knock it down a bit. But the head is where it's at. I mean, it has a bit of a sinister look to it, but also neutral, like he thinks, well, okay, in the back of his brain, he knows that he's above everybody. And I've seen some people complain about this being kind of a bucket or big, but I see it as the human, or well, <laughs> the humanoid face inside this weird helmet. And especially this contrast in color. Well, the purple works with the rest of the costume, those villain colors of green and purple, but this blue and then the lighter blue right here, it just helps bring all the attention up to the face. And then maybe this series theme is silver because there's a bit of that in the eyes and I'm not even gonna complain. That looks fantastic. Would look a bit badass with pupils looking out the top like this. R. MK. I also mentioned engineering, and when I first saw this figure, I thought, how the hell are they going to get the torso to move with this overlay? And then when I started moving it, the whole thing is the torso. It actually has quite a bit of movement at a ball joint at the bottom, but then I looked even closer. I was in here looking for butterfly joints, and it is an overlay on the torso, but there's no articulation behind that overlay. Every now and then, if I go too far back and then I come forward, I can feel that overlay get stuck somewhere right here. You just got to push in push down. Another preconceived notion as I look through the window into the package, hand and swivel elbows, but even there you can see how far down it's cut. Crank on those, they do go past 90. Now they could go further, but for a puffy sleeve, that's not terrible. That also preserves the look of the wrinkles going up all the way to the shoulder. So well done. Going over articulation, there is your hinge, there's your ball. If you shift back around the collar, you can look up. Push forward and down. Not much tilt, but there's swivel. Hinge at the shoulder goes up, rotates around. Now, like I said, this is an overlay. It has some flex to it, but you got to kind of jut out to get it all the way around. Hinge at the elbow goes past 90. Swivel. Hinge at the wrist and then that rotates. Like we talked about, ball joint at the waist gets around. The tunic below the belt is also a soft material, so the ball coming out to the hip can get up to there. Back. Out. It doesn't quite beat Falcon, but it's up there. Swivel at the thigh, beautifully hidden behind the purple thigh-high boot. Double knee. Oh yeah, easily kicks his ass through time. <laughs> Hinge at the ankle goes, whoa, all the way back. Quite a bit forward too. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Kang comes with two fists. You can easily pop those out. He has an alternate set of clawed villain hands that he can monologue to. I will rule all of time and space. Beyond that, we also get a fifth hand on top of all this nice, new, beautiful sculpt. It is the left, and for that, we get this blaster. Now, I am not a Kang expert. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not a put-a-gun-in-hand expert either. So I don't know if this is a specific weapon. It blasts holes through the, the, the space-time continuum paradox something something but it is a bit hard for him to hold it with two hands it does hinge up and down being a trigger finger hand he can hold it in that clawed hand hell that looks good but kang needs no weapon but if he did he can hold it one-handed pretty good make my day and i think i'll just leave that gun <laughs> in that hand like that he also cuts an amazing stance. He has a beautiful silhouette. Kang stands at about six and a quarter inches tall, and I am calling this no contest. The Hasbro one is 500 times better. Well, I don't know if this is the original or the Hasbro reissue, but this one, get out of here. You're not worthy to stand in this Kang's presence. Here he is with the 80th anniversary Thor and Captain America, and then this wave's Gamer vs. Captain America and Iron Man. Finally, the Joe Fix It, or well, the Gamer vs. Joe Fix fix it build a figure should be the right leg it's not designated but i'm pretty sure that's the right foot it's so tight to put on left foot get on there behind the camera strength <laughs> huh getting rowdy with it that's an actual overlay the collar and the tie i guess if you really really wanted to you could have casual fix it oh and the tie isn't even printed down to the end of it right arm <laughs> way easier than the legs 
And then the head. Before I pop that head on, it is a dumbbell joint up there at the top. And that looks pretty good. It looks like it should, you know, it's Hulk in a suit. I haven't played the game, so all I have in my head is that comic book look, which is much thicker. The head is way bigger. This works, but it's not how I imagine them. Also, this is an overlay on the torso. You can see that it's fairly smooth. I get to the arms and it has this, I don't know, something on top of it, this white... What is that? It's on both arms. It's almost like a residue of some kind. Well, it's not so much on the back. You can see it's splashed right there. Should I be touching this? Kind of on the legs too. To take some scrubbing bubbles to it or something. Coming down to these big mallets of hands, it looks powerful. Same thing getting down to the feet. You got these fancy shoes with this design sculpted into it. Pants sculpt, few wrinkles here and there. Same for the jacket. There's Hulk's face under there, nicely printed pretty just standard look. Well, yeah, I guess Joe Fix It would be a bit more calm. The head is small, but that just exaggerates the body. So I think that works. But looking back at the initial pictures, I remember thinking, oh, is that green? Fix It should be gray. But now that I have it in hand, it is gray, but it has a green tint to it. It's somewhere in between, and it definitely depends on what you're looking at, what light, what camera. It's a weird gray. Going over articulation, it's a bit hindered, but you can look up. There is some down. It it does have some tilt because of that dumbbell under there. How far can we go? Swivels. Arm hinges up to about right there. Rotates around. Hinges swivel at the elbow, comes up to 90, and then rotates. Here's a hinge at the wrist, but that cuff is deep. It swivels. Ball joint in the torso. Can get some rotation, some hula hooping going on. Ball coming out to the hip, goes up, eh, about right there. Goes back, out, about what you expect. Rotation at the thigh. Single knee, doesn't quite make 90. Rotates side to side a bit. Hinge at the ankle goes, eh, a little back, a little forward, little rocker. I've seen several people do this. You can pop the head off. You can pop on the Apocalypse head. I guess this is a new look from House of X, Powers of X. Still have the neck showing a bit, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then the Age of Apocalypse hands. Eh, the sleeve kind of swallows it up. <laughs> I'm already used to this big honking hand. Not bad. I'm wearing daddy suit. Joe Fixit stands at eight inches to the top of his fedora. And he's appropriately big with the game reverse Captain America and Iron Man. But that does put him smaller than the comic book Hulk, which I'm okay with, and smaller than the first game reverse wave abomination. I put the Marvel Select head on there way back. I can't find the head for that. Well, I guess if you bend it down and stuff, you know. Yeah. So at the end of the day, just a, a fun set of figures. Sure, I'm not the biggest fan of Thunderstrike, but if you are, then <laughs> you're in luck because they made a Thunderstrike figure. Jocasta was high on my want list and it is great that Hasbro made such a valiant effort to put her into plastic form. The Gamerverse Captain America is more of the same. Again, it's just a rehash of the figure we already have, but I do like it in black. The stealth mode does look better, at least to me. And I'm gonna say the same about the Foosh Blue Iron Man, simply because, hey, Foosh Blue. Falcon, another update that we desperately needed, and I know people are still waiting for that classic version, but this will do me fine for now. Joe Fix It is nice, I'm okay with this, I wanted a suited Hulk, and while this doesn't scratch my comic book version itch, this'll do for now. Or maybe I'll break open that comic book Grey Hulk see what I can do about that. Or is anybody making third party or custom hats or heads that look more like the comics by now? Mm -hmm. But for me, the big winner is Kang. Just a classic villain, perfectly translated into action figure form. And while it's not my favorite wave this year, it's still fun. I'm still happy with, well, most of these. Thunderstrike, again, personal preference. Don't take that as, oh, this figure sucks. It's just I got nothing for Thunderstrike. But if you enjoyed this review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I wonder if I could get another one of these for the body for that Lalandra head that came with, oh, who'd that come with? And then I need a blue cape. Would that work? It's a fairly clean body, except for this diamond pattern, but I don't think that would matter much. Yo, Joe!